Hi, welcome to A Film Darkly, where I discuss the philosophical concepts found within movies. I'm your host, Anthony Paceno, and in this episode, we're going to be discussing The Watchmen and the ethical dilemma of human nature that is found within the film. It goes without saying that if you haven't seen the movie, I would recommend watching it before listening to this audio, because I am going to go into spoiler territory, and I am going to be speaking about the film as though you're an individual who has seen it. So I would highly recommend watching it before listening to this audio. So in The Watchmen, you have this sort of alternate timeline um, of the, the 80s, where the Cold War is at its peak and Richard Nixon is apparently still president. And we basically have a doomsday clock that is at about 1158, 1159. So everyone is sort of distraught. People are are really um, don't know what's going to happen and, and, you know, are are very much so scared. And we, we are introduced to our heroes who are now living in a world where they cannot be heroes, except only one of them is still acting as a hero, which is Rorschach. And at the start of this movie, a character, the character by the name of Edward Blake, or the comedian, is murdered. And we eventually find out that he's murdered by a character named Adrian Vidit, otherwise known as Ozymandias, because he finds out the truth of Ozymandias' plan. And so Rorschach springs on the scene after the comedian is murdered and starts to sort of become the eyes of the audience we see everything through Rorschach and how Rorschach kind of um, reminisces about the comedian and and how he is sort of discovering things as he moves along and the story of like Dan Dryberg and Laurie um are really just sort of side stories that are somewhat related to the main concept here, but but are not necessarily a part of that. Um, really, it, Rorschach is kind of representing us in the film. And the comedian is sort of the, the harbinger of truth. He's the one who understands something that the other characters don't seem to get. And so... What ends up um, happening in this movie is Ozymandias comes up with this plan to deal with people, to deal with this cold war that is showing uh, there is expressing that human human beings are finally heading to their peak where they're going to destroy each other once and for all. Basically, human beings have finally got to their worst. And they now have the ability to destroy themselves. And so Ozymandias feels that it is within his ability to stop it, to react. And so he comes up with an elaborate plan to frame Dr. Manhattan by uh, giving his close friends um, cancer and... uh, pulling this entire incident where he teleports everyone out of a out of a um, a room and um, just kind of showing that it, he's unstable and detached from from people and subtly placing this fear in in everyone concerning Dr. Manhattan all the meanwhile, he has Dr. Manhattan helping him to build these devices that are meant to replicate the energy Dr. Manhattan is made of and are supposed to be somehow feeding energy or, or you know, delivering a type of energy all around the world. But as, Dr., as um, Dr. Manhattan doesn't know and no one else knows is that Ozymandias actually is using these devices as sort of like nuclear bombs in and of themselves. There are these these bombs that are blowing up and destroying massive cities, killing millions and millions of people all around the world. And 
by doing so, Ozymandias' plan is that the world would look toward Manhattan. That they would point their finger at him as this would look like an attack from Manhattan against the earth. Thus causing human beings to drop their differences, to put away their put aside their differences, and to come together to face this common threat. And Ozymandias' plan is meant to is formulated to handle human nature. That's what it's meant to do. It's meant to to put all this to an end. This uh, you know the, this hatred and you know the the finger on the nuclear weapons and uh, just ending the distraught times that they are living in and to give us peace. And all the meanwhile, Ozymandias' plan is being fulfilled. Ozymandias himself doesn't understand one thing, which is human nature. And that's the idea that is given to us, the ethical dilemma that is presented to us through the character you probably wouldn't expect it from, which is the comedian. A character who seems to understand what it is to be human and we see this throughout um his various quotes and um specifically you see it the strongest with the funeral when they go to the funeral for the comedian and each character is reminiscing on some moment that they had with the comedian and there's a few things the comedian says that i'm going to quote that sort of give you an idea of what he thinks of people what he thinks of human nature and what he thinks that that ultimately means and so the first scene is a scene where he's talking where they're they're in this room and they're um it looks like they're just having meetings as the watchman and it's rorschach thinking back and the comedian says something or says so now Moloch's back in town and you got your knickers all in a twist. You really think it matters if you catch him? To which Rorschach, you know, responds, justice matters. And Edward Blake says, justice? Justice is coming to us all, no matter what the F we do. You know mankind's been trying to kill each other off since the beginning of time. Now we finally have the power to finish the job. Ain't gonna matter once those nukes start flying. We'll all be dust. And Ozymandias here will be the smartest man on the cinder. So that's a very interesting quote. And what the comedian is saying there is that justice in his mind is the end of mankind. Because mankind has been so destructive. So justice will be that day when the Cold War is no longer cold and becomes a war of nukes. And in his head, that's what it is. That's what he honestly thinks. And he points to Ozymandias as being the smartest man on the cinder. The smartest man who, you know, is is dead. Doesn't realize that, um, you know, none of that justice talk matters. Because just true justice is all of us dying. At least it, in, in, it seems as though that's the case in Edward Blake's mind, the comedian. Um, then we get this scene with um, Night Owl and uh, the comedian. And they're kind of coming up on this protest. And people are throwing trash and everything. And the comedian gets really frustrated, jumps down, and actually starts shooting at the crowd. Which is the worst possible thing. But there's a point where Night Owl tells him, asks him actually. He says, what happened to us? What happened to the American dream? And the comedian responds... What happened to the American dream? It came true. You're looking at it. So what does he mean here? Well, what he means is that... Well, I mean, first of all, dissect what, what was said. What's the American dream? The American dream is freedom. Independence. Justice for all. And here the comedian is saying, It came true. You're looking at it. Yet the comedian is a murderer, 
a rapist. He's an ugly individual. So what does he mean by that? Is he trying to say that independence and freedom for human beings will breed the worst kind of people? Is that what he's saying? Is he saying that when human beings don't have restraints and are able to be as free as possible, this is what they look like? I think that is what he's saying. And that's very, very interesting. Because it's showing us even more why, more so, why he believes justice to mankind is death. Because he sees human beings as hopeless. He sees human beings as creatures that deal out death. All for their own sakes, as selfish creatures on this earth. And there's a point where he says something uh, to Dr. Manhattan. But he's not exactly correct about what he says because of something else we find from Dr. Manhattan. So leaping from the comedian, we're going to, to look at Dr. Manhattan and how he sort of has an oversight yet at the same time he's kind of a a narrative as well because comedian is is sort of the um the personification he's the um he's the actual essence of of what human nature is that's what he represents he's the embodiment of human nature whereas dr manhattan in a, in a sense, is the only one who kind of gets why human nature operates that way. Or at least he, he sort of seems to, to lean that way. But there's a point where Dr. Manhattan and um, the comedian are in a bar. And this is during his scene where he's reminiscing on the comedian at the funeral. And a woman comes in and she's pregnant and she starts yelling at the comedian, letting him know that that was his child and the comedian of course blows her off and she gets angry breaks a bottle and actually cuts his face and the comedian reacts by pulling out his gun and killing her and after he kills her dr manhattan says she was pregnant and you gunned her down but the comedian's very very quick to react and he says to reply and he says that's right and you know what you watched me you could have turned the gun into steam the bullets into mercury the bottle into snowflakes but you didn't did you you really don't give a damn about human beings you're drifting at a touch dock god help us all and so for the comedian he's accusing manhattan of losing touch with human beings because he has these amazing powers to control and manipulate matter so why didn't he stop the bullet and he's saying the reason you didn't is because you're losing touch and later on we see rorschach sort of do give the same criticism it's when when rorschach figures out all that's going on and he's telling the group that he's going to tell everyone about Ozymandias' plan because he doesn't believe in it. He doesn't believe that you can change human nature based on a lie. And Rorschach's walking out of the building and he runs into Manhattan and he says, out of my way, people have to be told. And Manhattan responds, you know I can't let you do that. But Rorschach shoots right back and says, suddenly you discover humanity? Convenient. If you'd cared from the start, none of this would have happened. And so that's the same criticism as the comedian. Where the comedian is saying, you're drifting. And Rorschach is saying, if you cared, none of this would have happened. So they're both kind of reflecting on his power and saying, you're this, you know, quote unquote God. Why why aren't you doing more? And that might actually be a narrative on 
the concept of God in general, coming from Alan Moore, the original writer, or the, the writer of The Watchmen. So, Dr. Manhattan responds to Rorschach with something very interesting. And he says, I can change almost anything, but I can't change human nature. Why would he say that to him right after Rorschach had just finished accusing him of not caring? Because Manhattan has a different perspective. It's not that Manhattan doesn't care. It's that Manhattan sees human nature a certain way. And we see that in this part where he's talking with Lori on Mars. And he, te- uh, Lori being Silk Spectre, and he tells her, This is where we hold our conversation. In it, you reveal to me that you and Dryberg, Night Owl, have been sleeping together. Lori is taken back, and Lori says, You know about me and Dan? Manhattan says, Not yet. But in a few moments, you're going to tell me. (laughs) Laurie responds, if you already know the future, then why were you so surprised when I left you? Or when that reporter ambushed you? Why even argue about it if you already know how this is going to end? And here's, here's the interesting part. Manhattan says, I have no choice. Everything is preordained, even my responses. Lori says, and you're going, and you're just going through the motions. The most powerful thing in the universe is still just a puppet. Manhattan responds, "We're all puppets, Lori. I'm just the puppet who can see the strings." So what is he saying there? Well, he's obviously giving a narrative on determinism or fatalism and saying. Human beings are puppets being controlled by something much greater than us. Something that preordains what we do. Whether that's just the nature of human beings in general, whether you want to take it as God, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that we are all puppets. And that everything is preordained. To a degree that Manhattan can't do anything about it hence his response to rorschach i can change almost anything but i can't change human nature that would have been the same response to the comedian that response also reflects there it's not that he's drifting out of touch it's that he can change almost anything but he can't change human nature it's it's not necessarily an excuse But it's it's a reflection on what he thinks is preordained and why for some reason he has his limitations on how he can react because human beings are human beings. He let the comedian make a free choice there. Was it an ugly one? Yes, but he made him make, he met, let him make a free choice. Now, going back to this little scene with Rorschach in Manhattan, this is what makes it even more interesting. Right after he tells him, I can't change human nature, Rorschach responds, of course, you must protect Vidit's new utopia. One more body amongst foundations makes little difference. Well, what are you waiting for? Do it. And we, you, as we know, Manhattan kills Rorschach and he kills Rorschach which um, he kills Rorschach doing exactly what Rorschach said he was doing applying another body to the foundation the foundation being the millions of people that were killed in order to to fool the world into thinking Manhattan is the enemy this way they could come together in peace forming as Rorschach called it the new utopia But isn't that a contradiction? It is. And that's the interesting part of this is Manhattan contradicts himself literally moments before blowing up Rorschach and 
basically putting his official stamp on Ozymandias' plan by devoting himself to it and killing one more life. Or killing... Yet killing a life to add to Manhattan's millions. And yet moments earlier, just a moment earlier, if if that, he says, I can change almost anything, but I can't change human nature. Then why would you put your stamp of approval on a plan that is trying to change human nature? If you believe it's preordained and can't be changed, Why are you placing your stamp on it? Why are you attempting to do so? This is our ethical dilemma, is human nature. And Ozymandias believes he can change it on a lie. And and Manhattan places his stamp of approval, even knowing it's a force that cannot be stopped. And this is where we go back to the comedian who revealed this to Ozymandias earlier on. When Ozymandias is reflecting to the comedian, they go back to that room that they're in where they're having a meeting. And Ozymandias tells the comedian, it doesn't take a genius to see that the world has problems. To which Edward Blake, the comedian, responds, No, but it takes a room full of morons to think they're small enough for you to handle. Comedian's letting him know right then and there. You're thinking too big. You think that you can handle the world's problems, but you can't. You cannot force people to change even if it's based on a lie because that lie will one day be revealed it'll one day surface as we see at the end of the film when we find Rorschach's journal singing in the basket of a journalist so it's only a matter of time that they find out it was all a lie they probably go to string up Ozymandias and things possibly go back to the way they were who knows something else will probably come of it that's even worse or just as threatening as what they had just dealt with so what this is a narrative on is on this ethical dilemma of human nature that nature that when free when presented with it with independence doesn't do its best but does its worst. And when it's given the ability to destroy itself, it will. And even if you try to formulate a lie, it will never be enough because it's preordained to happen. It cannot be stopped. That is the... That is the... um, the question that or the um the point that Alan Moore was making when he wrote The Watchman. And that same point that we see here in the Watchman film is the ethical dilemma of human nature, which seems to be saying, unlike what some philosophers may um may say, which is that human being human nature is not it does not naturally um, bend toward the good, but naturally bends toward the evil. As some people say, the pull is always down, not up. And there are many people who would argue otherwise, especially if you're an altruist. You're going to argue that that the human nature, that the, the pull is always up, not down. Um, but... In this specific specific story, it's showing us that the pull is always down, and um, that's the um, the narrative, at least, that Ellen Moore was presenting to us. So that's going to do it for this show. Um, next week or next episode, I'm going to be discussing the Dark Knight, 
and we're going to be looking at human nature um, personified or um, uh, in the flesh I guess you could say um, in that film which is the Joker Heath Ledger's the Joker so stay tuned for that and um, thank you for listening to this podcast I hope you guys have a good day